Welcome to part two of the analog circuit construction tutorial using the CircuitLogix simulation software package from Logic Design. In this part of the animation, we'll continue on with our construction of the basic voltage divider biased common emitter amplifier. This tutorial covers circuit wiring, setting component values or parameters, as well as circuit annotation. In part one of this tutorial, we placed all the components required for our amplifier circuit. We'll now move on and connect the components in this amplifier. We'll begin by using the zoom tool to zoom in on the circuit. With the zoom tool selected, we click anywhere on the workspace to zoom in on our circuit. To begin wiring, we select the wire tool from the toolbar. CircuitLogix provides two methods of wiring components, manual routing of the wire and auto wiring. Hover the mouse over any pin on a component and left click to make a connection. Scroll the mouse in the direction of the next pin and when you arrive, left click again to make the connection. When in manual wiring mode, left click to change direction of wiring from vertical to horizontal. Connections can also be made to existing wires in the same manner. This creates a node on the wire. Wires can also be connected to existing nodes. Auto wiring is accomplished in a similar fashion. To use this option, left click on the pin and hold the mouse button down. Drag the mouse towards a wire or pin and then release once the red box is shown to make the connection. Previously placed wiring can be manipulated and moved in the schematic. To relocate an existing wire, left click on the wire and drag it to the new desired location. As can be seen, the flexibility of the wiring options allows the user to quickly connect and complete any of the routing required for wiring the circuit. Although it's possible to connect two wires to a single pin, it's recommended that you use nodes for circuit clarity. With the circuit wiring completed, we once again click on the Zoom tool. To zoom out, we hold the shift key down and click anywhere on the workspace. We'll now move on and examine how component values can be specified. The resistor values required for our design are shown here. To specify a value we simply double click on a component to bring up the dialog box. The desired resistor value can be entered into the label value field as shown here. Many of the components in circuit logics can have their parameter values set in this fashion. This includes resistors, capacitors, inductors, as well as DC sources. We set the value field to 20K and click OK to confirm our value. As can be seen, the resistor value has been changed to 20 kilo ohms. We can continue on to set the remaining resistor values we will also set the DC source value to 15 volts for this example. The resistors and DC source all shared the same type of dialog box for entering a value. We'll now set the parameters for the AC signal source. The sine wave source dialog box allows the user to specify a DC offset, a peak amplitude, as well as the source frequency. The input signal we desire is a 100 millivolt, 1 kilohertz sine wave with no offset. The only value we need to change here is the peak amplitude value. We enter 100 millivolts into that location and click on the OK button. To finish off our basic circuit construction, we're going to add some annotations to the coupling capacitor and load resistor. We start by double clicking on the input capacitor to bring up the dialog box. The description field allows us to add an annotation to the component. We enter the desired description and then click on the visible checkbox to make this description visible on the workspace. 
Unchecking the label value visible checkbox hides the component value. As shown here, our component value is now hidden and our desired description is visible on the workspace. We repeat this process to add an annotation for our output capacitor, our load resistor, and our DC source in this circuit. Now that we've added a description to our desired circuit elements, we'll take a moment and show how comments or headings can be placed on the workspace itself. To add comments to the workspace itself, we select the text icon from the main toolbar. We then click on the location in which we want the text to appear on the workspace. When the text box opens, we type our desired title in the available location. We can now save our completed file and move on to the simulation tutorial to learn how this circuit can be simulated and the results can be plotted. For more information on Circuit Logics or any of the other logic design products available for sale, contact us by email, telephone, or visit the website shown here.